Hi everyone, here I am showing my phone. What I want to do today is I want to write a native-like application and um, show it here in, the, in my phone. I'm going to be creating a, an employee type of application which could run uh, totally offline. So what are we trying to do here? Uh, first, of all, first of all, I'm going to be consuming an API, this API. And with this API, I'm going to show all this uh, data in the um, in the phone app that I'm about to write. So I go into Service Studio and I write a new application. And this time we can create uh, responsive um, applications that are also good for tablets and phones and browsers, of course, or specifically for mobile use cases where you may want to run offline or where you may want to have access to over 1,800 Cordova plugins. Here I have different um, different templates available. I will select one of the uh, templates that I already customized, and I'm going to call it demo. And today is the the tenth, eleven the tenth, so uh, November tenth. So I, I'm going to call it that. Maybe I want to upload some sort of icon that I can remember uh, that will help me identify the application. I can change colors. I can do all kinds of things. But let's uh, create an app. So, okay, let's go at it. Now I'm going to create a module, a very simple module. And first of all, uh, let's go to Logic and let's consume that REST API that we just showed. So I'm going to consume a REST API. I'm going to add a single, a single method. I paste the API. I hit test and I try it. I see I have the data. I want to copy that so that I have um, the structure I need. And I go, I say, okay, and now I have, I have this um, API that will return a list of all of responses with this um, data included in it. And again, there's many different ways of doing this, but this is the way I like to show how it's done. What I want to do is I want to take advantage of this new, um, the new ability that not only can we consume data from databases, but we can take advantage of, our, of the uh, SQL Lite. Uh, database that um, that both Android and iOS have. So here I would add an entity because I want to whatever I put in the, uh, whatever I get from the uh, from the API, I'm going to be storing it in this table. Notice by the way, all these methods are already there. Uh, let's see, I need a, an employee name, on and on. But you don't want to watch me type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to go to one that I already finished where I pretty much do the same thing. I'm going to copy this structure that maps to the data that I want to save. And I'm going to paste it here. So cool, I have all this here. Now let's go to the logic. And logic now, notice that we have client and server um, actions. Uh, what I need is um, I need a, an action. I need to be able to sync up the data. And and. For this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, client action. I'm going to call it sync up. And uh, in here, I'm going to put the logic that I need to sync up, just the way I'm writing it today. Um, I'm going to call the API, right? And then I want to, I want to um, create or update all the employees. So I come here and I do that afterwards. Now the source list needs to be fed to the to the method. Uh, where am I getting my data from? Well, I just did. I called the API, so let's grab the response, and then the platform takes you know makes the best guess depending on the name of the of the columns uh, of what each one may be. The one that I had trouble with is a is a long integer that I could go into the conversion function and and uh, and convert it, but it's easier if I just say long integer to identifier and the field that it's got trouble with is the ID. Uh, so all right, so we have this sync um, subroutine in this action, this method. Um, notice that in logic, uh, in the offline data sync, we have um, a way to configure um, at different times, when is it that you want to sync up with a server? If you lose connectivity or you're offline, you could just set these flags to whether when you come online you want to call a sync up or when you when you first log in. So you can configure that. 
and then whatever you do, then you just come in here and you could bring this sink up here. So that's when, this is when this routine is going to get called, whenever you, um, you set it up. All right. So, okay, we have that part of the logic working. Let's go to the UI. Let's go to the UI. Uh, in the main flow, I can have all, all kinds of uh, screens interconnected, but let's just work with one of them, the uh, home screen. Uh, let me make it anonymous so that we don't have to worry about IDs and passwords. And I'm going to go demo on 11.10. And uh, in, in here, I want to, I can get my data could come directly from an API, from a server database, or... Uh, from local storage. That's the one I want to use. Again, local storage is great because it's faster and also it will work offline. So I grab the local storage and I bring it here. So now I have a, an aggregate. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go back here and I go to the home screen. And in here, I have different widgets. I have all kinds of widgets available as to where, how, structure I want to show things. In fact, let me show you that we have all kinds of patterns here. There's um, over 45 patterns or so. Let me see. We have, we have over, over 50, 59 mobile pa patterns and also web uh, as we always have. Uh, but if I view them all, I have all these um, different patterns I can use. I have a carousel, um, have things like uh, if you want to uh, incorporate this type of of ability for the user to flip content, all kinds of things. But let's go back to the coding. So anyway, uh, what we want to do is list. So I'm going to list um, everything that is in my local storage. So it's complaining, through change is complaining that I need a source here. What do I have available? Well, the aggregate, the employee list, that's cool. Here is, well, the question is, how do I want to show this? So I'm going to say a card. And in here, the one that I like to use is this card item. I'm going to bring it in here. And it, it, it's all set up to show an image and some data. So in the image, let's see. Let's go with, um, it's not going to be a local image. It's not going to be a data from a storage image, but it'll be external URL. So what satisfies that type? I get a photo URL. Awesome. So now I want to put in some more data in here. Let's show perhaps the display name. We bring it right here. All of this can be configured with CSS. You can change the look and feel, uh, but we make it very easy. So we have this, let's say that phone, let's, uh, let's make this little widget, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's say that when you hit that, you wanna call that person. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna link to, um, I'm gonna link to a URL and the URL, the syntax of the URL for a call is simply tell plus, and then from the data that I have, I'm going to grab the phone number. So let's see, I got the work phone number, so I place it right there. Cool. Um, so let's see, what else might we want to do here? Well, first of all, I need to be able to sync up. I'm going to, for my demo here, I'm going to make an explicit sync up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some sort of icon here. It could be an image, but in this case, I'm going to grab a, an icon, one that makes sense, like a refresh, and bring the refresh. Again, I want this to be a little bit bigger, so let's go with three times. And here I'm going to right click and I'm going to link to a new client action. In the new client action, what is it that I'm, that I'm doing? Well, I'm calling that sync um, method or action. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to refresh my data. And this is the data I need to refresh. So I'm really set to go, but let's, let's show some other stuff. For example, I said, I mentioned that you can, Cons you can consume any Cordova plugin that's out there, but we have some that come out of the box. And, uh, and I come here to what is in my environment, and I'm looking for something that I can show you now. I'm going to show the, um, any plugin. So all these plugins come, in, um, come out of the box. I have a contact plugin. I want to use that plugin. I see I have an add to contacts. And I hit, okay, so all the other ones, like card.io, you can read a, a credit card, you can scan barcodes, you can access your camera, 
tons of other things you can do, but today I just want to talk about the basics. Um, so I say OK. I press OK. And now what I want to do is that let's say that when I press on this on the picture, I'm going to right click and I'm going to link to um, a, a new client action. So let's grab the new client action. And in here, what I want to do is come to Logic. I have this plugin. And, and here, I'm going to add to the contacts. And in here, I need to match this data from the data that I have available. So I double click first name. And I see that I have a row with the first name. So I plug that in. Let me grab this because the other guys are pretty similar. Last name, you got the work phone, the work email. Okay, good enough. So in, now I want to just repeat this and do the same thing for the, um, for the last name and do it for the phone number, uh, work phone. And last but not least, we want to do work email. Those are the parameters this plugin requires. So we're all set. Oh, well, let's, let's tell the user that we just added something. So this is a good feedback um, widget. I come, I go to message. Uh, let's uh, say I have, let's see, I, I have a display name. So uh, was added to your contact list. All right. And, and at this point, I'm ready to publish. So um, parts of the code get uh, published in the server. And we also publish into, we create a, uh, a React.js application, same technology that Facebook uses, uh, that can be extended with Cordova plugins. Uh, it says it's done. Uh, notice that we have a pretty uh, robust um, uh, um, emulator. Uh, so if I, if I refresh this, I can see all my data. But the, the, the proof to this is really to uh, create a... Um, publish a, a real phone app because it's uh, it's not in my phone yet. So let's bring it, let, let's do that. I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to close this and close this. And in demo 11.10, uh, November 10, I'm going to come to native platforms. I could test it without systems now. We have a tester, but I think it's even more um, interesting uh, to show it in the actual device as a real uh, native-like app. And notice you can configure for either one, but you only have to create it once. I want to configure my iOS. In my case, you can configure, you know, publish to the Apple Store, create IPA or APK files. I'm going to do this in-house method. I, um, the app identifier, I'm going to cheat and use my cheat sheet of links. So let's see. I'm going to grab this here. That's going to be the app identifier. Um, then I'm going to bring in a certificate, which I have over here. So I have my certificate. So um, so I do that. And then I need a provisioning profile, which I select. And I select the right one. I hit open. And now I generate the app. I've been told that this takes, this can take up to three hours to do it in traditional uh, ways. In, in, with us, this will take about three minutes. And what I will do is I will stop the, uh, the video and then I will reinitialize it when this is done. Okay, so we're all set to try this out. I'm going to bring my phone. I have a QR reader. I read the, uh, the QR code. I'm going to get the application. I'm going to hit install and hit install. This is just a QR code reader app that I picked up for free. Let's close this up. Let's actually look at what I have. So now I have an app. This app didn't exist before, if you can recall. Um, so I'm going to hit demo 1110. And I should see my first screen. And I need to sync up, so I'm going to hit it, um, the sync up. I have all my contacts in here, my employees or what have you. Um, if I press the phone for James Bursmith, I go right into the phone. Um, if I press his face, 
I, it tries to access my contacts, which I do, and then I add this person to my contact list. Now notice that I don't have a search. Let's, let's try to add a search to our application real quick. The cool thing is that I don't have to republish the app to the Apple Store or anything like that. I can come to the application. And let's do this real quick here. What I'm going to need is in the, um, in the page, I need to have a variable. I'm going to call it search. All right. Now, my, my SQL has to need a SQL, a, a filter. My filter will be that if the display names like uh, like the search, so let's find the search plus okie dokie, so we're all set with the SQL, now let's um, let's deal with the uh, UI in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a search widget and I bring it right in here and um, the other thing I want is a place to uh, hold to hold the, the input, so I do that, and when I do that, uh, true change complains that uh, I need to set that input field to a variable, which I quickly do. So I have that, so I'm almost done. As they type, as the user types, I'm gonna have an, an unchanged behavior here, an unchanged event, which calls a new action and the new action that it will call will be simply to refresh the data. And this is the data with the SQL that I want to uh, refresh. So I'm going to republish this. And again, we create versions, we compile pieces of this, go to the server, the React.js is ready to go because what happens is that when I come to the phone, check out what happens. Let's say, let's make some change here. I'm going to go into the home screen and nothing yet. I'm going to do it again. And now it says, hey, I see there's a new version of the code. So it brings the new version of the code. And notice now that I have this search. So if I start typing something in here, E, R, R. See, I'm starting to pick up all the uh, Sherry's. And I'll, I'll go with the I. And that was very fast. It picked up everybody with an E, R. I hope this um, this um, helped. Um, thank you very much for watching.